All right, guys. Well, I hate to do this, but today we have two cars leaving DDE. All right, so the first car that has to go is the Bentley because it's in the way. We need to move this thing out so we can get the two cars that are leaving out of the shop. You know how it goes here. Sometimes we buy cars, sometimes we sell cars, sometimes we crash cars and buy a replacement. Look guys, I can't do anything about it. I mean, literally right now, the transport is here. So sometimes when transport arrives, they have other cars on there and they have to unload them to do a little car shuffle. And today we have a pretty cool car that just came out of the transport. Dude. Dude, this is an immaculately <laughs> clean 996 Turbo. Honestly, I have not seen one this clean in probably 10 or 15 years. Wow. This thing is spotless. Enough of the delays. Tim, you got the keys. First car to go. Tim, how does it feel seeing this car get loaded? It kind of sucks. I kind of, I really like this car, especially how it came out. I like the gold as uh, arrogant and flamboyant as it is. It's really cool, especially in person. And a, a lot of people look at it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so. definitely one of the craziest cars to ever ride in. Not only because, well, it's a supercharged Gallardo. Yeah. Also, no, you're not hiding anywhere at all. <laughs> it's also the rarest Gallardo. That's true. It's kind of sad. Kind of sad. All right, that's just car number one. We have one more car that's leaving today as well. Tim, can I have the keys, please? The three key. Thank you. All right, and the second car leaving is the Mercy. So we just finished this car. We did a ton of work to it, a complete transformation. But there's nothing else we can do to it here, so it's time for it to go. The splitter, the grills, the lights, the tow hook, the wing, the diffuser, the new wheels. This thing looks amazing now. This is one of my favorite cars. It's hard to see this one go. thing about the new shop and the new building is we have the whole block so instead of having to block traffic and park this massive bike car rig on the street it's safe and it's super easy now he can take his time no big deal nobody's behind him honking rushing him or anything super safe that's so sick yeah that's awesome and every time it gets me it looks pretty cool these trailers are so sick you can just load the car up and, and the car can be low because this is flat level so that's awesome Say bye, Tim. Bye. Right, it's time for the mercy. Doors go up. This car is so hard to load. It's like, it's deceptive because you look at the front end, but the back of the car is literally like a foot wider than the front. It's crazy. So yeah, lining up the front wheels could put you completely off the trailer with the rear. You admiring your work? I am. I'm like, man, this car even looks good from the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's always sad to see the cars go, but they're not leaving forever. These cars are on their way to Boston for an East Coast rally, a 3,000 mile trip that Damon and Dave are doing with their significant others. So you guys stay tuned for that. I'm sure it's gonna be crazy as it always is. And we will see these cars again back here in the East well, fairly soon. All right, well, now the shop is pretty empty. It's a pretty wicked echo in here too. Not all the cars are gone. We still have some cars here. The only issue is that pretty much every car that's here needs a lot of work. And I'm not exaggerating when I say a lot of work. Well, you got the big office. Yeah, man, I'm the big dog, so I decided to take over. Tim's got that room, this is my room. What are you doing? I'm currently doing a little bit of online banking. Make sure that the cash is still there. Bro, this is unsecured network. Are you using ExpressVPN? 
No. Why would I use ExpressVPN? Are you actually doing online banking right now? Of course I am. Look. No, 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 no,
I don't know. And then we have the Street Evo, which actually is one of the few cars that is running and driving well left here at the HQ. And we have big plans for this car. We've already got the sequential shift lever in it. We have the e-brake installed, but the next step is to put a clutch pedal, but it's an electronic clutch pedal and all the electronics that go along with it. So we can be basically like a manual transmission. That's gonna take some time. That's not something we're gonna work on this week. The modifications that we wanna make on this car are pretty big. And if we don't get them right, it could literally destroy this car. So we've got to take our time and make sure we go through all the steps and do everything properly. And we're talking about wiring harness, a new transmission control board, which we've already purchased, two transmission control modules, which all have to be wired in and all have to be tuned perfectly to make this thing drive the way we want to and to not completely destroy the transmission. And then we have my favorite sounding car, the SVJ. Transmission is still broken. Where is the new one? I don't know. They haven't told me anything about if there is another one, what's happening with this one, if it's getting rebuilt. We haven't been told to take it out, so no idea. <laughs> oh boy, Garrett's calling me back. Hello? Hey, have you guys found a solution yet? No? Were we supposed to find one for you? <laughs> Where's the onesie? Where's the onesie? Oh, dude, it was too hot, man. I had to come out on a walk. I'm stressed. I've been trying to get a hold of everybody, figure this out. <sighs> ah, just kidding. My car showed up like two minutes ago, dude. So. Where are they? I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> they were on the freeway, and he said literally they're like on their way out to LA or something. So we snuck them. He came over here. I guess I was supposed to be at HQ. There was like a little bit of confusion. So you, you made him go out of his way to pick you up? Well, no, 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 I said that wrong. You're delaying our delivery. <laughs> Regardless, the car's getting on the truck and that's just going to Boston, man. So I gotta sit there and drive it myself. Because if I did, Wifey's flying first class by herself and I gotta sit there and drive this thing, what? Like 3,000 miles across country? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what car are you bringing, the Lambo or the Porsche? Or the Honda? Oh, come on, dude, it's Lambros. Oh man. Oh gosh. We have almost all four, you know, generations of Lamborghinis going, guys. I gotta bring the Lambo. Do you guys wanna see the sneak peek? I did one little change. You made a change? You washed it. Let's see it, let's see it. So I'll call you back before it gets loaded on the truck. Okay, okay. Let's see the change. Make sure it gets on the truck. Bye. <laughs> this car, we actually have quite a bit of work to do and it has to get done this week. So the plan was rear diffuser, maybe change up the exhaust back here, possibly do some side skirts, maybe some dive planes in the front, maybe a wing. That's all kind of stuff that we want to get done. We got to measure a bunch of stuff and figure it all out. But now we've got more issues. The car is like slammed to the ground. Dude, it's it, doing the Carolina squat. It definitely looked lower than we uh, set it to before. More stuff that has to be repaired apparently on top of modifying everything. I don't know, we gotta put this thing in the shop and figure that out, but I'm trying to figure out what's going on over here. Why is the van out here in the middle parked in front of the 599? The 599 is just on the other side of the van. It's just sitting here. Dave left, parked out. Why is it here? With all the room inside. The hood. Oh, the hood's, uh, tow hook's in it too. Oh, that was always on there. Was it? Yeah. Since when? Since forever. Hmm. Let me call him. Hey, the 599's in the uh, kind of in the middle of the block over here and the van's parked in front of it. What's uh, what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing, Mike. I was practicing how to drive. I want to be like you one day, right? I want to be a better father. I want to grow my hair back. And I want to know how to drive a car. I was just trying to let's kick it a little bit. Do you break? I think it was the point of it broke. It was a throttle. Anyways, I came down the side in front of the block sign. Did I put it in first, clutch in, nothing. Second, third, fourth. So now I have six neutrals with seven in reverse. Did it come to a stop on its own or just had no more drive and you hit the brakes and it stopped? Um, I think it stopped by itself. It does go into all the gears clean still. I can feel it clicking in. Like the clutch is like disengaged and won't engage now. It's stuck disengaged. So the clutch feels like it's stuck on the floor? No, 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 it feels fine. You could have broken the input shaft 
to the transmission, which is basically the torque tube shaft, right? That goes all the way through or internally inside of the transmission that could have broken. You also could have broken an axle, which is probably the best case scenario, but it's going to take some uh, investigating to figure out what happened. Absolute worst case scenario, I destroyed that transmission. Yep. What's that transmission worth? But probably easily 10 grand used. Oh. Easily? Yeah. It's my problem now. Yeah, it could be your problem or it could be your joy, depending on their mindset, right? Maybe you know, there's something to do. Maybe you're like, I'm bored and it's 2 o'clock on a Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to pull out a transmission. That's my favorite thing to do, Tim. I think it sounds like Tim's problem, to be honest. You know, we could put like a good old American transmission in Yeah. Here, so. Something out of a Camaro. C6, brother. I'll see you later. Cool. Later. Hello? Hey, sexy. God, I love that hair, man. <laughs> I mean, the doors are open, so there's wind. Are you flatter? Are you so, like, As I was about to show this, I was like, should I show it? I mean... Just show it. Uh, yeah? Yeah. What are you... <laughs> All right, here's a little, little teaser. Okay, what's the teaser? <laughs> oh, dang. New wing? Yeah, Perfumante. Where'd you steal that from? It fell off I, the back of a truck. Did, I literally did steal it. There was a guy at a car. <laughs> <laughs> Basically a perf now. Wow. Yeah, look at you. Ooh, shiny carbon. So it's real? Mike's favorite. <laughs> shiny carbon. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, do you call a fake Rolex real? You know? I mean, no. No? You, it's called a fake Rolex and it's fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like fake perf, you know? But damn, look at that stance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just like totally change the look. And then if you go from the front. <laughs> Make like, complete makeover. Yes. Wait. So what else? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Is that all your teasing us? What, what else? What else is done? Are those different wheels too? Oh, you have it. Oh yeah. My, Mikey Mike hasn't really seen. Them I haven't much. seen those wheels. Damn. Look at that bling. Yeah. You know. Woo. Well, I'm glad your car made it. Yeah, somewhat on the trailer so yeah, far. Being loaded. Look at that. I'll appreciate fly car one last time. Let's check this out. <laughs> You're not showing the fly car trailer though. Oh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the best in the business, honestly. I mean, they've made this process so smooth. Thank you guys for hooking me up with my car. Hey, You're not in your onesie anymore. What the f Yeah, what happened? Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, I had to get you. If my neighbors see me in a onesie at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, then I got some explaining to do. I gotta give the OnlyFan vibes if I have these kind of cars in my house. Yep, yep. Stay tuned for that. Later, guys. Later. <laughs> Stay tuned for what? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, well, Garrett just plugged his OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, join now. Apparently, it's free forever. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's clutch. See. How does the clutch feel? Clutch feels. Clutch feels good. It feels normal. Well. Yeah, I think it feels normal. I haven't driven this thing. In uh, in a couple weeks, so yeah. Doesn't, well, it's it not stuck terrible. to the floor. Yeah, exactly. It has good pressure. Okay. I mean, that feels like it's clicking properly. It does have resistance. It doesn't feel like it's just you know broken. From yeah, the back of the car. I can hear the linkage in yeah. the back. It's not like something crazy broke or so. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll start it and see. Let's see how it sounds. What it does. Here. Whether it's just going to be a repair or a complete upgrade, a new transmission, we'll find out soon. Keep going, keep going. All right, that's good. 
So where do you plan to actually connect the 599 to? I'll think about that after. First, I'll think about it right now. So uh, boom, tow hook? Tow hook. That's ripping out. No, it's solid. You think so? I don't know. There is a hole in the chassis, it looks like. Just tie that like that. I don't think they designed caravans to tow other things. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put it here and we're gonna hope that we don't rip these back seats out of the car. Nobody sits back there anyways. Let's see what happens. All right, right. so we gotta do like uh, kind of a wide swing into the shop. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll make the turn, maybe we won't, maybe we'll so stop. I'll go straight and then go wide. Yeah, kind of go like this way, you know, out this way make, and then make that big long right hand into the shop. But do I go into the shop? You gotta not? go in the shop. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, we gotta push this thing up that hill. I don't wanna do that. Okay, so wide, then into the shop. Yep. Then, then I go and left. Then turn around. Yes. Wait, what did you say? Never mind. All right, Mike, are you ready? I think he's ready. Why are you stopping, Tim? Tim, why are you stopping? Go! <laughs> he missed the part where you need to turn right. Turn right, Tim! Turn right! <laughs> stop, stop! That actually worked. And it went pretty smoothly. The trusty CGT. All right, well, we're gonna get this thing up on the lift and uh, start the inspection, seeing what Dave broke. That guy's good at breaking things. He's always breaking shit. So what do you think it might be, Tim? What's your guess? I don't think this, but I, I am hoping that it's just a clutch. Even though it's still a lot of work to get to the clutch, I'm hoping that's, that's all it is. Isn't um, the clutch brand new? Yeah, it is. You know, there's this thing called a break-in period that did not happen. How long is the break-in period on a, like a new clutch? Um, I think it's like 500 miles. Oh, that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, definitely this, not. This did not get broken. Definitely not. It got broken. It got broken. <laughs> broken in to pieces. <laughs> Here's the possible failure points on this car. We've got the clutch, the flywheel, and the pressure plate that are located inside here. And then after that, we've got the input shaft that goes into the clutch, the drive shaft basically that sits inside of this torque tube that runs back here into the transmission. That's also another connection point. And then an input shaft in the transmission that runs through here. Gear sets, another intermediate shaft in the transmission. And then it comes to the back here where the ring and pinion are because it's a transaxle. So we've got the ring and pinion and then we have output shafts and then we have axles they go out to the wheels. There's a lot of things that could have broken to make this car not drive anymore and have six basically gears plus a reverse that do not do anything. So first thing I'm gonna do is check the easiest thing to check and that is the axles. Well that axle is not broken. Oh yeah, this axle is broken. Really? Yeah, check this out. I'm holding the inner CV, so holding in place. It's spinning and the only resistance right now is literally the axle boot. Axle boot and at the end there's that clamp. That clamp is just dragging on the axle shaft. But the axle shaft has completely snapped. That's what it feels like because the axle is staying very centered. It doesn't feel like the CVs, the bearings inside there failed. I think the shaft itself just snapped, sheared off. So. I was wondering why you were spinning one side and this side wasn't spinning even the opposite way if it was like an open diff or something. Yeah, yeah, right? So if you have a limited slip diff and you turn a wheel, both of them should turn in the same direction. And if you don't have a limited slip and you turn it, it'll turn in opposite directions. This one's not spinning And it at is all. not spinning <laughs> at all. And because of this limited slip diff that's in here, I think 
there is zero preload left on it. Preload is basically how much clamping force it has without any force being applied to it. I think clutch discs inside of there are probably pretty worn. Normally with a good diff, you have one axle go bad, you'll still get some drive to the other tire. This is acting like a completely open diff right now with a broken axle where you have zero drive because it's trying to basically put all the power out to that side that's broken because oh. that's the path of least resistance. Same reason why you're going around a corner and you get on the throttle and that inside tire spins or you're in the wet. You hit that wet patch and you get that one tire to spin. Well, that's because it's trying to put the power to the least resistance. That is the least resistance right there. <laughs> no resistance The broken at all. axle. No resistance. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's easy. Hopefully that's all it is. Well, that's easy. I mean, it's a Ferrari axle, so I'm sure it's gonna be thousands and thousands <laughs> of dollars, but at least it's not gonna be a big job for us. So that's good news. How did the axle break though? Uh, one way that, uh, not from experience, uh, <laughs> that this could happen is, you're on the handbrake, and then you forget you're on the handbrake, and you drop the clutch, full throttle. Yeah, or your timing is just a little off. Your handbrake is still on, <laughs> and you pop the clutch, and then you let the handbrake go. That little split second of timing means those rear wheels are completely locked with the brake calipers <laughs> as hard as they can, and then you try to put power down, and something's gotta go, and that was the axle. <laughs> so when he said he was learning how to drift. Oh, he was learning. He learned something. <laughs> But did he though? I don't know. A broken axle is probably the best case scenario for this thing being broken. I'm not gonna go to the dealer for this. They're just gonna be way too expensive. Let me see if I can find a used axle here, save some money, maybe even get it a bit quicker. So I'm gonna tell Dave the transmission is smoked. We're gonna have to pull it apart, tear it down, and see what's going on with it. But it's just an axle. I'm gonna replace the axle, and then when Dave gets back here, I'm gonna let him stress for weeks because he's gonna be on the rally, he's gonna be gone, but the car is gonna be fine. It'll be back up and running and driving. So when he shows up, I'll just do some donuts around him or something when he walks in the parking lot. That'll be, yeah. <laughs> Boom, found one. Nobody tell Dave. You guys have to have our back on this one. All right, 750 bucks, 35 bucks shipping. All right, Axel has been ordered. That should be here in a few days. Not a big deal after all. We'll get this thing back up and running as quickly as possible. All right, well that was a big relief that the 599 only had a broken axle and we can get started on the Bentley project. We've already got a lot of stuff done to it, but we're about to take it to the next level. Starting with the front of the car, the first thing we need to do is make a new grill. So we're gonna do a mesh style grill, an aluminum frame around it, powder coat that black. That's gonna give us a much more racy look. Next thing we wanna do are some side skirts. The side of this car just looks really soft. These curve in a bunch. It doesn't even make the car look low and the car is actually very, very low. So I think we need to build some side skirts that come out a little shelf with maybe a little kick down. I think that's gonna add a lot to the looks of the car visually from the side. We need to do something about the exhaust. We gotta do something to make the back of the car look better and I think that's gonna require a diffuser. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna do it yet. We've got the parking sensors. We've got this light back here. I don't really wanna remove those things. I wanna keep all that stuff there. So I think we can cut the bumper off down here, cut it around here, get rid of these tips. I'd love to do a center exit exhaust. Woo! That'd, be cool. That'd be pretty sick. I don't know if it's feasible yet. We gotta pull this stuff apart, pull the under trays off and look and see what's going on down there. But uh, all that stuff, I hope I can get a center exit because that's gonna look sick. And then maybe a chassis mounted swan neck oh, wing. So it can really look like the race car. Yeah, because with all that arrow, this little dinky wing, yeah, this I thing, don't think this, it's... <laughs> this thing looks like a <laughs> Yeah, it's I, cute. Yeah, I feel like this needs to be put in the down position and left there. A big wing, diffuser, some dive planes in the front, some side skirts, a grill, and then obviously a new livery. This car is going to be the next car that we transform completely in a week or so here at DDE. Now, Mike, if you asked me, which you didn't, I think these are the uprights you got to put on this car. The ones off of the Evo 2 oh, race car. Man. True swan. Just get the Evo wing and put it on the Bentley. It's such a different car though. It just won't work because... No, no, no. Just this, make it work. Would, just make it work. But it's going to be... No, no, no. Mike, Mike just make it work. on the trunk lid. I think it has to come out from the bumper here. Oh, you're ridiculous. Come up. And then I think it needs to wrap forward and, and then back. come back. Yes, that's that's how they do the swan neck mounted wing. So oh, we gotta put a hinge though, so he can open his trunk. That's uh, <laughs> that's the tricky part is making this all actually functional. One of the things Dave likes most about this car that the interior is so nice. It's got a massive amount of trunk space. So if we put a big wing on here where the trunk's not usable anymore, I think he's gonna be kind of upset. But we'll get it done. We'll somehow. do it anyway. We'll do it. We'll do it. Doesn't matter really. <laughs> Hello, sir. We got the 599 up on the rack. We looked at it and um, it's not looking good. I think the transmission is completely smoked. 
we're just gonna have to tear the thing apart and uh, tear the transmission apart and see what's going on in there. And we'll pull it out of the car, we'll, we'll crack the case open and see what's going on. I don't even know if parts are available for those transmissions, but yeah, we gotta open it up and see what happened. Daddy broke his Ferrari. What does that mean? It means Daddy has no more ads in this video. <laughs>